All right, everybody, hail and welcome to tonight's episode of Midgard Musings. Thank you so much for joining, watching, and supporting this channel. My name is Jesse, and I'm the host here on Midgard Musings. I upload new content every week, usually related to Norse heathenry and Norse heathenry related subjects, things that may strike my interest or fancy at the time. And today is a special episode because we are wrapping up the Nine Pieces of Eight series. This has been a rune discussion series, uh, sort of a surface scratching of the various uh, meanings behind the Elder Futhark runes. This is a very common set of runes that many heathens nowadays use for divination, magical workings, things of that nature. Um, so thank you so much for staying with me throughout this series and for tuning in today for the final series. Now I want to sort of preface this uh, by saying that this is a bit of a longer episode. Reason for that being is that at the end of this video you're going to want to stick around and watch it all the way to the end because uh, today we're going to be, or I am going to be kind of revealing a little bit of what I do with my rune workings or how I work with the runes. Um, towards the end of this video there's going to be a section, uh, a whole segment that is dedicated to what I do with rune castings, rune spreads, that sort of thing. So please stick around and watch the entire video. Even though it is a little bit long, I hope it's worth it for you, okay? So be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe to the channel if this is the kind of content that fits what you are looking for. Um, watching these videos, commenting, liking, subscribing, all that kind of stuff not only helps support my channel, but it helps support uh, other heathens, other like channels that are out there on this platform, you will see more content that is related to kind of the things that I do in your YouTube feed. Um, so bear that in mind as you look to support what I do. All right. So before we continue, we always like to light a candle. I got some incense off camera here that you don't necessarily see, but we're going to go ahead and light that and light this candle. And then we will go ahead and get into uh, today's discussion. All right. So uh, as we do this, I just want to kind of call attention to the fact that I'm coming back now from uh, yesterday, the 22nd of June. We were out supporting and, and vending at a uh, local heathen kindreds event called Sunabloat. It is the Raven Moon Hearths uh, annual event. It is a public event, and uh, it is open to the public. Like I said, it's a public event. So it's open to the public, and everybody can come out. We were there yesterday vending there uh, really excited to to be a part of that so hail to the hearth you guys will see an annotated card up here where I spoke to their uh, scald uh, Greg strong friend of mine he is uh, an, uh, an official with the hearth so be sure to check out the description down below for ways that uh, if you want to know anything more about Raven moon hearth be sure to check all that out okay um, so today's episode like I said is the the finalization or the wrapping up of the nine pieces of eight series guys we've been discussing the elder food art runes uh, three runes at a time now for the last eight weeks, and today is the final series. So we're going to be talking about Ingvas, Dagas, and Othala, and so let's get started, all right? So the Ingvas rune, everybody that's watching live on Facebook, I'm going to show you this beautiful graphic that I hand-drew myself. Um, so you're going to see kind of two different variations of Ingvas, right? For everybody up here on YouTube that's watching. The Ingvas rune can take different appearances. Um, you'll see it portrayed as this a lot, and you'll see it portrayed also like this. Kind of looks almost like a diamond uh, shape, but it is the same rune, and it does represent the same meanings, right? Um, it is a rune of uh, kind of like isolation or separation in order to create a space or, or place where the process of transformation into a higher state of being can occur, all right? That may seem a little bit, uh, you know, obscure in description, um, but ge generally what that means is that it's, it's a rune of gestation and it's a rune of internal growth. It is closely represented, or, or closely related, I should say, to uh, the god Freyr uh, in Norse mythology, who is in uh, Proto-Germanic, uh, quite often uh, related to be the same as Ingvi. So Ingve Freyr, you, you'll see that name quite often tossed around in the lore and in the sagas as, as being the same figure. Freyr was one of the gods that was very 
regularly venerated uh, with the common folk, with the farmers, with the people who lived in, in, and worked off of the land, which is pretty much in our heathen times, unless you were nobility, uh, that's what you did. That's how you had to survive. Um, this rune is a rune that represents the beginning and or, 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 or the end of a cycle. Um, there's a realization of ideas, new projects, you know, visions, dreams, things like that, that are um, in that period of gestation, that, that period of growth, that um, are going to be coming into something anew. And as we get into the, the, the next room, we're going to discuss th that becoming aspect, okay? That, that awakening, that newness aspect, okay? So Ingvas, again, it, it represents uh, or symbolizes a um, concentration, you know, the focus of creative powers just before things manifest themselves or their, or their full appearance. Things are in the works. Things are growing. Things are, you know, uh, developing. Uh, because it's associated with prayer, it, it does have a very masculine or male-focused uh, uh, level of virility. So, um, whereas in one of the previous videos we talked about Vercana being a rune that focuses on the female elements of Fertility, uh, Ingvas, focuses on the male, uh, you know, uh, level of fertility, you know, so there's that, that male virality, you know, um, the, the, the beginning of life, the, 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 the producer of life, so to speak. Um, and in this, we see that uh, there's the symbolization of the earth and um, how we deeply relate to the earth, to Yord. You know Thor's mother, in a sense. Um, quite often in rune readings, we we can relate the appearance of it as meaning that uh, you know we need to spend more time with nature. We need to reconnect with the the earth that we are so closely connected to. Maybe we've lost that connection. We've lost that uh, you know the the connection to the earth that we are that our ancestors worked so closely with. Um, pay more attention to the natural order of things, the way things are growing and, and uh, becoming into things. And it's quite timely that we're talking about this this time of year because we're in the solstice midsummer uh, season and you know we are, we are experiencing growth, we are experiencing life. The sun is at its brightest and at its strongest this time of year and uh, we hail the sun and we hail Sol or Sovilu for her life-giving light and her life-giving force to, you know, produce good crops and to give us good things so that way we are prepared and sufficiently provided for in the darker and colder months that are going to be forthcoming. That's kind of the, the nature of, of uh, Ingvas. And then next coming in the series is Dagas. All right, so for Facebook here, we have Dagas, which is the day or the dawning, more specifically, the dawning light, the awakening or the, the bold dawning light that appears when the sun first comes up, right? It is a room, rune of heightened or hyper-consciousness, right? Uh, the process of becoming uh, and, and, and that becoming being realized, that awakening, that bold, you know, think of the sun when it first hits the horizon after the darkness of the dawn, and then boom, here comes the sun, and it's that, that awakening, that, that bold light. Um, as I mentioned earlier, with the, uh, the process of transformation from Ingvas, the sequential flow of the runes, you know, things are becoming, things are at their finalized gestation period, and then... Here comes Dagas. Here comes that awakening. You know, um, it, 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 it quite often references uh, the most basic of cycles because you have night and you have day. Um, over, over time, where like Yera, you know, in, in, in one of the previous videos of the series, we talk about the cyclic return of the seasons and that long, long, longevity. Uh, 
of, of time as it, as, it, as it stretches. Dagas is not longevity. La, dagas is, boom, the, the, the change from night to day, day to night, that sort of thing. Um, it is a very powerful rune, uh, and it's a reminder of the cyclical, 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 that, that, that sort of change of, of the nature of all things. Things have their time, things have their change, and in, and in Dagas, it is a very bold and uh, immediate change. There, there's no stretch of time. It, 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 there is a small period of time between the night and the day, of course, but the, the representation of Dagas is that it is a bold awakening, it's a bold light. Um, we kind of see it as, as being a balance of oppos opposite energies, okay? Um, the night versus the day. The daylight being that bold, bright, shining, awakening moment that comes from the darkness, okay? And then finally, but not in the least, least important, is uh, Othala. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about this rune after I talk a bit about it. But Othala, okay, for Facebook, everybody up here, Othala is a rune of ancestral spiritual power, all right? The divine inheritance, earthly estate, things that relate to our ancestors, our um, the, 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 the things that we inherit from those who have gone on before us. It is that physical manifestation of everything that's been earned previously, uh, whether it be physical, monetarial value, things that have, you know, inheritance of, of money, of, of estates, of lands, or of things that we've inherited from our ancestors that go beyond just the, the, the tangible things, whether it be traits of ourselves, um, characteristics, things like that, things that we inherit from our ancestors, um, previous generations. Um, it's, it's not limited to the house or to, or to the estate or anything like that. It is, it is, I feel, it is closely related to what we refer to as Orlog. Okay, it is the weird that our ancestors wove in the web that is added to the well that we have no control or say in what we get. We are born now in what we inherited from our ancestors. The things that they did were added to the well and we get what we get. The, the cards were dealt and we just kind of have to deal with them. We are heirs, okay? We are all heirs um, of, of things that, whether we want them or not, and it's on the condition of making, for us now, it is on the condition of making the, that necessary effort to kind of find the road of those that preceded us. The road was laid, and we, are, we, we kind of just got dumped into that path. How we traverse, how we follow, how we carry on our way um, is up to us individually. Our deeds are our own. Um, the reason why Othala does speak very highly to me is that be before I started pursuing my path with the runes, um, I, I was an active heathen. I've, I've been you know, doing this now for as, as, a, as a practicing heathen for four to five years. Um, but my pathway, my, my sort of awakening the Dagas, uh, into, into studying the runes, was one night I was sleeping soundly, um, and I was awoken, awakened, uh, there, there was an awakening to me, there was that bold, a literal awakening, I was jarred out of a deep sleep by a loud crack, something that sounded like two pieces of wood being smacked together, and I literally woke up, and I, sat, I was laying, of course, laying down, sleeping in my bed, I woke up, and I was alarmed, and it, it was like, what is that sound? And it was, it was, there, nothing had fallen, nothing had been disrupted physically that I could determine. Um, but as I woke up, and when I awoke, the image of Othala was kind of in my mind's eye. I could see it being projected in front of me, and I could hear it being spoken in my ears. Um, so that was the time that I personally was sort of alerted to the fact that you should pursue the runes. This is, this is something that is calling to you. This is an awakening that you must now, you know, address. So, um, everybody, this is 
a wonderful series. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I want you now to stick around because as I transition into my own workings with the runes, um, I hope that what I reveal to you now here soon will help you in your pursuit of the runes. And as I always like to say, guys, this is not canon. This is not me saying that this is how you should pursue the runes. This is not how you should pursue heathenry as a whole. This is my approach to heathenry. This is my approach to being a Vitki, to working with the runes and helping others uh, using rune magic and stuff like that, okay? So check out what I'm about to do. I'm going to reveal it to you guys here now as we transition into this moment. Thank you so much for supporting me through this series. Thank you so much for supporting Midgard Musings as a whole. I hope you guys enjoyed this series. Stick around next week. Everybody that's watching on Facebook, don't go anywhere. Stick around next week because next week we will resume another series that has been dormant for a while, and that will be the deity discussion series, okay? So stick around. I will be revealing the deity that we'll be discussing later on in the week. Enjoy my presentation. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Thank you so much for supporting Midgard Musings. Hail. Hey everybody, thank you for taking the time to watch this portion of the video where I kind of show you a little bit um, about how I work with the runes. Alright, so um, this is going to kind of be a sort of, let me zoom in just a little bit to show you, uh, this is going to be sort of just a kind of a, you know, example of what I do when I work with the runes specifically. Um, this is by no means something that I think, you know, is an example to follow. It's just a suggested method of working with the rooms when it comes to divination, okay? So right over here is, I got some candles lit because I like to, to have fire present. Um, fire is a great element to incorporate when you're working with the runes. Um, fire, water, all these things that can send the energies of the, uh, the powers of the runes into the, into the, uh, you know, into the void, into the, into the sacred realm, so to speak, right? So some people will, will use fire, um, others may not, but that's just kind of how I do things, all right? Um, so to start off with, let me show you this is my rune box okay and this is actually a rune box made for me by my wife um, and I'm gonna actually talk a little bit about some other projects that her and I and a friend of mine does um, here in just a minute but this is a rune box um, it's just a simple box and it has my my rune stones in it uh, she's got the Vulcan that burned into the top of it and all the elder food art runes burned all the way around um, the rune set that I use was gifted to me uh, by a friend and it came in this bag which I still keep because when I'm traveling or when I go places it goes in this bag and we're actually going to transfer the runes into the bag here in just a minute. Um, but before we go into that, let me just call attention to, as I mentioned earlier, um, my down in the description you're going to see a link to a video or to a Facebook page called uh, Burn On Custom Wood Burnings. And this is a Facebook page that my wife started um, to, short of, to showcase various wood burning projects. I'm going to show you a rune set that I made in birch. Okay. And um, let me hold on a second. Here we go. All right, so here is the rune set in birch. You know, um, we sell these through the through the burn on custom wood burnings page down in the description check it out um, this is a birch rune set okay it's it's stained it's not like uh, finished in any way they're sort of they're, they're left kind of raw they're just stained a little bit um, so in terms of uh, um, you know uh, uh, finishing them off with like wax or any sort of sealant that would be up to whoever would would buy these 
Um, so those are available through the uh, page that is linked down in the description. Here's another cool set that um, my friend actually made, and this is this is a wonderful piece. It comes uh, in a box kind of like this. You can customize the box if you want, but it's a Mjolnir uh, burn into the top with some Celtic knotwork going all the way around. And then these are really, really neat, guys. Got a little bit of a Sao San Paulo, I think it's called, uh, incense stick. Kind of gives it a nice aroma. But these, check these out. These are like rune dice, almost. And they are just a simple, uh, I think probably basswood or something, um, stained and, and, and sealed rune sets. Really, really fun to, to hold and, and to work with. Um, so these are available also. There's all kinds of other neat stuff that's available through that page. Um, there's candle holders. There are um, picture frames, jewelry boxes, rune boxes, whatever kind of bo you know boxes, the things that you may want to stow um, your belongings in. Um, those are all available down there through the um, through, through the Facebook page. We got offering bowls, rune sets, all kinds of cool stuff. So definitely check that out. But anyways, now that we've got that out of the way, I'm going to open up my rune box. So every day, um, this is my rune set. They are they are not um, elaborate in any way, shape, or form. They are a simple stone. I'm not even exactly sure what kind of stone they are. Um, but you will get rune sets that are made of stone, made of wood. Uh, sometimes made of bone, if you're so fortunate enough to get something like that. But this is my rune set that I work with every day. This is the rune set that I use to do drawings for myself, uh, to do castings and drawings for others, okay? So um, I'm going to show you guys two things. I'm going to show you, well, actually three things. I'm going to show you what I do every day, first of all. Um, some other folks, uh, some other pagans will do this as well, and it's just a simple rune draw. It's, some will call it an Odin draw or Odin's pull, rune pull. Um, so basically what that means is you'll, you'll go in and you'll kind of shake up and disturb the box a little bit, and you'll pull without looking, just, you know, a random rune. And whatever that rune is, is the rune to dwell on for the day. A lot of folks um, do this. Um, I don't think there's any historical, you know, backing that would prove that this is something that was done by heathens, uh, arch heathens. But it is something that a lot of modern folks will do. And it's something that I do. And then at the end of the week, I kind of collect uh, and compile all of the runes that I've pulled throughout the week. And... Um, kind of determine what the lessons are uh, to be learned from the runes by everything that I've pulled for that week, right? So there's that. There is also a method called rune spreads, right? Um, so a lot of times what you will, you may see, and this is, this is very modern in its uh, approach. You guys may hear some rain. It's, it just started raining. You may see a rune spread. You may see something like this. You may see a three rune spread, you know, where random runes are are picked in a, in a three rune spread, and the outcome is whatever. It's a little off center there. Let me back up a little bit. So you get the, you get the picture, right? It is a, sorry for the disruption there, but it is a modern con uh, construct of and basically what, what a rune spread does is it, depending on, you'll, you'll see three rune spreads, you'll see four rune spreads, five rune spreads, you'll see rune spreads like, shaped kind of like a, uh, like a plus sign, it's called the Thor's, uh, Thor's cross, um, rune spread, or there'll be, you know, some up here like that, you may see them shaped in like a grid where you'll get three, three, and three different ways. You'll see you'll different rune uh, masters, different VPs will work with the runes in different ways. Um, and that's personal preference a lot. I don't do rune spreads that much um, just because I feel like it's a bit more, you know, it feels more like a tarot reading, you know, where you have like a structured uh, thing. I'm, I'm putting the runes into the bag now because the third thing that I'm going to show you is more or less the method of rune reading that I do, which is casting. 
So in this method, what I do, what everybody else does, you know, again, that's their thing. Um, but what I do is whether it's from a box or whether it's in a bag, such as this, okay, is the, the runes are cast out. Um, and, and what that will typically look like is if I were to uh, reach into a bag, let me back up the camera just a little bit so you guys can see the whole surface. If I were to reach into the bag, I'm obviously going to be grabbing a handful you know, of the runes, okay? And you're kind of just, uh, without just looking, you're just gonna cast them out, you know? And they will sometimes form a shape. Uh, there obviously are going to be some that are appear upright and some that appear uh, down, downward facing. The, the, the runes are hidden. Um, so I will typically, the way I do it is I will do castings in three sets. I will do one set, which is one casting, one handful of stones, or one handful of runes. The next set will be another handful of runes, you know, and then the final set will be a third set, a third handful of runes. And interestingly enough, that rune fell off of the table, and I'm going to get to that in just a minute, you know. Um... But so typically, like for instance, the first, uh, I believe it was these, you know, this first set is I would look at the runes and determine what ones were facing up um, and then read the runes uh, in, and their meanings and see, you know, what runes were closest to one another. You know, so for instance, this one we have uh, Ingvas and Tiwas which are very close together. So there's, you know, um, you know, you have the, the, the exalted self of, and, and fertility and, and victory and protection uh, very close together. So there could be meaning within that. Um, here to opposite sides of one another is, is uh, Dagas and Yuas. You know, and Yuas is, is, is a transformation of change um, life and death, and then you have Dagas, which is the dawning, and, and also some, some transformation. So you have runes of transformation that are parallel to one another, and then off to the north, or off to the, to the top, revealed as Othala, you know, estate, her inheritance, ancestral ties, things like that. So, you know, depending on, I can't really determine what this is meaning, because it doesn't have any meaning. There's no particular casting being done here, but that is the kind of what I look to. I look to see what runes are close together that are revealed. Um, and then we look to see what are, uh, at least what I do, is I look to see the runes that are close to the ones that are close, that are concealed. Why are they concealed? What is, what is, what is hidden? Because, you know, Burkana is hidden. Uh, birth and fertility and protection and sanctuary. And then uh, Manas you know, humanity, humankind, so, uh, society, things like that. You, depending on the person, depending on who the reading is for, those things could be significant. So again, that was, you know, the first set. Then the second set, you know, is what it is. And then thirdly and finally, I would take the remaining runes, um, take the remaining runes, and where there is free space, you know, cast again. And we have all of the runes except one concealed, and the only one revealed is Yera, which is the harvest and, um, you know, timely uh, uh, reaping of reward, uh, that sort of thing. So, um, <clears throat> the, the rune that fell, and I will sometimes look to read things like that. If, if a lot of folks will use a, a, a reading cloth or a rune casting cloth, it'll be a spe specified surface, a specified cloth or, or blanket or some sort of thing that is especially for rune castings or rune draws. Anything that falls with outside of that um, is maybe significant. So this particular rune, when it when it took off and fell, was uh, Sowilu, which is the sun, um, success, bright, you know. Uh, uh, illumination, some may say victory, um, but again, that is uh, debatable. But I, I look at it as, a, as somewhat of victory, but it's of success and of 
you know, uh, right action of, of things about to happen. So if it falls out of the surface of the casting, if it falls away or it falls off, you know, the indication may be that there is a, a need or a lack uh, of that particular rune meaning, you know, the, the, it, it, it fell away and it wasn't a part of the casting. Um, now, what I like to do is whenever I work with runes for someone, is I like to spend time with them a little bit. I like to, you know, understand what the purpose of their casting holds. Why do they want the casting? What is on their mind? Get a little background of them. Get a little bit of weird in the well. Put them. Put some things into the, you know, uh, into into uh, me, Miss Brunner, to 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 gain some insight for the runes to pull from, and then. I cast and we read the runes as we go. So it's a very in-depth process. It's a very, uh, you know, it's not just like, well, this could this could mean anything. Um, as another example, uh, you know, sometimes we'll see just kind of how, where, what may happen. Um, okay, that rune fell off again. Um, but you know, we, we again we have runes that are that are close together. We have runes that are spread out. Sometimes what you will see in you know certain castings is it, it just depends on how the runes fall. They will sometimes you know they will sometimes form a rune in and of themselves. I've seen runes fall you know sort of kind of like in a you know that sort of shape or something where it uh, just as an example where it like it all like you, you cast it without even trying to and it forms a rune shape in and of itself. You can see the resemblance in this rune casting if it were to fall like that if runes were to fall like that of uh what appears to be almost like the uh perthro or not perthro a uh, wundio rune which looks like the letter p i'm going to see if i can you know find it here real quick for you just for reference we've gone over the the runes already for you guys you can go back to the there it is so it almost you know that that kept casting as you can see here uh you know almost has the shape of the Wunyo rune, and I've seen and I've done rune castings where that happens. Um, not necessarily Wunyo all the time, but just as an example, right? So there's 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 ways to, to read the runes as is you can take each indiv individual rune meaning and, and develop something of a, of a story or develop the, the reading and, and read the runes as such, and then you can see that at the larger picture of it, the runes shape a rune in and of themselves which is really cool I know guys so um, anyways I think that pretty much sums it up that is kind of how I do you know rune work and rune castings how you guys do it how you experience if you've ever had a rune reading from a Vitki uh, from somebody who works with the runes things may be different they may do things a little bit different you're also going to Notice sometimes that in the Elder Food Arc set, we haven't talked about it thus far in the series, but you're going to notice sometimes in the Elder Food Arc set that there is a blank rune. I don't particularly believe in or work with the blank rune or the what sometimes called as referred as the weird rune. Uh, I don't I don't mess with that because the runes are not you know set in stone. Literally, they're not set in stone themselves so there's no reason to have a blank rune or an unknown rune uh, in the set the runes were a spoken language or used for spoke for spoken language in uh in in the in proto-indo uh, european cultures uh proto-germanic specifically is what the elder food art was used in terms of language why would you need an empty blank stone that that is that is 100 percent and truly and purely modern I believe Ralph Bloom is the one who is responsible for that and please if you are studying the runes and you want to know anything good about the runes you will steer clear away from anything by Ralph Bloom. Um, check back my previous videos um, for some annotated cards and references for good rune study sources, uh, things that will help you in the path that you're pursuing. Again guys this is just my approach, this is my kind of thing all right so i hope you guys liked it if you did please give the video a thumbs up as i said again thank you so much for watching me kind of give you a 
presentation of how I work with the runes. How you work with the runes is going to be something that is entirely, you know, up to you. It's uh, it's going to be something that you learn in, in in your rune study processes. If you want anything like this, as far as rune box goes, or rune sets, as I showed you before, such as the uh, birch rune set or anything that you see on the Facebook page link down in the description I have rune sets that are made from you know uh, driftwood this is birch uh, if you're interested in anything like this please mess please message that Facebook page and uh, or send me an email at midgardmusingstn at gmail.com and we can uh, get you all set up but this is today's video I hope you guys liked it thank you so much for supporting Midgard Musings watching the series and uh, walking with me in this rune discussion uh, type of stuff so I hope you guys liked it thank you so much for watching tune in next week there's going to be uh, we're going to be getting back into some other cool stuff so definitely check out next week's video and uh, I will see you all then so hail thank you may your ancestors smile on you and may the gods walk with you